I want to share a quick word about the things that I've been through. I was just out here riding and an old song popped up in my mind by Luke Devandross called Promise Me. And it starts out by saying I can only th speak for the things that I've been through. And there's a scripture in the Bible where Jesus said, I can only talk about what I know and testify to the things that I've seen. So it's like when it comes to my testimony and journey, can't nobody tell it like me. And the Bible also says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And I was just thinking about how anytime you get on here telling the truth and trying to make people aware and put them up on game, people get offended, especially when it goes against something that they're in bondage to, you know, because they get mad at anybody that takes that yoke of bondage off their neck and are free like the Bible says, whom the son says free is free indeed. And so when it comes to my truth, I'm gonna tell it like it is and how I saw it and how I experienced it. And, but nobody has an issue with people on here fronting for the gram or, or Facebook or YouTube or anybody that's living in a land of fantasy, that's living a delusional life. Nobody got nothing to say, matter of fact. They partake of that. You know, and nobody has nothing to say when people talk about their booty, their breast, or their car, or their motorcycle, or their house. You know, because that's the only thing that they have to talk about that's, that's um, of value to them. So it's like, when it comes to the things in church and my journey and my testimony, I got 20 years. <laughs> of experience, you know what I mean? And I faced some heavy opposition, you know what I mean? By folks that I thought was there to assist me and so-called covered me. Now I look back, it's like, shoot, I was more covered when I was out there drinking and selling dope than I was at some of these churches I went to. So it's like, truth be told, the things that I've been through, you know, and so, it's like when anywhere you go, be it family or are affiliated with family, pastors, you know, supervisors or whatever, you know, people can only emulate the abuse that they've suffered or the love that they've suffered. And most of the time, people can only emulate abuse because abuse and dysfunction happens more than love is emulated. So I was going to this one church and my pastor at the time was going to his church that he had been there for years. So when he left, the bishop got mad and told the people don't talk to him, you know, and all this stuff. So I was like, wow, that's deep. So I kind of had sympathy for him until the pastor in turn did it to me, you know, because it was all fun and dandy. You know, when I was in my elementary state of living for Christ, then when I became collegiate and understanding the word and getting in my word a lot, you know, the pastor told me, that, oh, you're getting in your word too much on your own. You need me to feed it to you. You're doing too much. You're doing all this stuff in the prison and in the streets, but you ain't doing nothing for the church. So that's what these dysfunctional, spiritual, abusive so-called leaders do they're not training you to go out into the world and teach the gospel like jesus did and disciple get discipleship yourself so you could discipleship others they're molding you to sit around and marvel at them for the rest of your life and sit there in hopes that they might let you preach or you know release you to go out and preach somewhere else because they really ain't gonna let you preach in the church too much because they're incompetent so therefore, they can only raise up other incompetent people. You know, that is if you don't seek God in the way that he calls us to seek him. And you don't know your word, you would be stuck up under that, uh, under the subjection of dysfunction and abusive so-called spiritual leaders. And so when this happens, you know, you face with an option. You know, should I stay or should I go? But I had to look at how far I had came 
you know, within them few couple years that I was there. So I stuck around for a minute. And then eventually things got worse, you know, because, you know, I didn't fall up under the, the guidelines of the spiritual Illuminati like others did. So others were actually, um, I can't even say raised up or uh, promoted over me because it was man and not God. So I really wasn't tripping because I was outside doing in the streets and in the prison doing what God called me to do. So I was good. I don't care less if you let me preach in the church. And that's one thing that these so-called leaders hate is when you have your own mind and can think for yourself, especially when, you know, you're being led by the spirit of God. And so that's a war when it comes to organizational and denominational elementary ways of thinking versus the unlimited spiritual uh, path that God has set for us to walk. And so that's why you're faced with a choice. And so when I finally did leave, you know, before I left, the, the pastor wife going to tell me, yeah, God showed me you back in the streets if you left this church. You know, so it's like, wow. If I'm not in agreement or I've outgrown, hey, how you doing, sir? If I've outgrown your elementary mindset and your four wall mentality, ain't it best for me to leave? But like I said before, their way of doing things is to train you to be subjected to them and be their lap dog and sit around and wait for them to throw you a Scooby snack in hopes that you will be at peace with that and that alone. And so that's why you got a lot of church people that's mad at kingdom people because they no longer have that yoke of bondage around their neck. And so these are things to be aware of, especially for those who are looking for a church home. <laughs> Let me say this, good luck. And because if, I'm gonna tell you some signs to look for. If the pastor always trying to put somebody down and make you think that he is above the law and you know he's the best thing that ever happened to God run if they try to play God in your life and won't allow you to sit down and be taught which they can't do because they're not teaching they're teaching from the word but they're enforcing church so it's like once you peep this leave and so too you know when they don't want they trying to Get you away from your family and friends and they don't want nobody else to have influence over you but them run so that's just a few things i can go on and on but i just want to share that real quick you know because it's like in their mind you don't have no other option but to be at that ch their church and to be subject to, to their abuse and their dysfunction so like I said about people living in this delusional land of fantasy mind, because that's the only thing that they saw. And so this is real stuff. I'm talking about the things that I've been through. I can't speak about you, but I'm not afraid to say what needs to be said. Because this is the very thing that people need to hear. Because these are the very things that are keeping people from really coming and truly having a relationship with God because they're diverted by man and their dysfunction and their uh, organization and, and denominational teachings and um, uh, doctrine. And so, and that's a, almost like a curse in itself because it's like, man, you just have to be up on game and, and listen to people that you really know have been changed, not those who have been who are in position to have had change, but those who have had change. Now I gotta give a shout out to my boy Gilbert, you know, cause he, <laughs> he's a little rough around the edges. Sometimes I gotta go get baptized after talking to him, but that's my dude and I got love for him because he real at the end of the day and he got a good heart. But anyway, he told me, he was like, man, you coming up on 20 years. And I was like, wow, I've been so busy growing and going that I forgot. And so that's the thing, too. When you handle the kingdom business, you know, you too busy doing what, what's next than, instead of marveling, you know, on what you've done. You know, because that's one thing that will 
get you caught up in pride and arrogance and being bullheaded. It's being focused on what you've done. So it's like when you have submitted yourself to God and died to your flesh, and um, oh, what's my other favorite scripture? Have fleed your youthful lust. You know, it's like a, a wonderful change has not only come and came over you, but a wonderful change that still has yet to come. So I just want to share that with y'all. You know, the things that I've been through. Peace.